Hi, in this video we're going to cover uh, some details in account creation and talk about different types of accounts and how to navigate the console. So let's take a look. In our repo, you'll see there's some details about account uh, creation. Now, why would we set up a cloud account in the first place? Lynn referred to this in the intro to this course. Maybe you have workloads that are too big to run on local machines. Maybe your uh, goal is to speed up the compute time on uh, a compute cluster. The goal here is to show how to use AWS platform services to run large or even huge genomic analysis jobs. Now, when we create an account with AWS, we are creating access to some of these shared large scale elastic resources. This allows us to run these uh, an analytics uh, workloads on large files, different types of data at dynamic scale. When you create an account with AWS, there are a few considerations we need to keep in mind. One is that there are different account types. When you first create a personal AWS account, you may be taking advantage of the AWS free tier. You also may be working within your organization's AWS account. These come with different uh, um, considerations and constraints. We're going to take a look at the free tier here, and we're going to explain why some of what we're going to be doing won't qualify for the free tier. So with this in mind, let's take a look specifically at the compute. When we look at the AWS free tier for compute, you'll notice that the instant type block, the free tier instance types are limited to the T2 micro size and the T3, T3 micro instance size. With that in mind, just know those compute sizes are smaller than what we will be working with in our clusters for compute. Beyond that, there are other uh, limitations as well. So just note that if you are going to do hands-on work within this course, you would be incurring a charge. And that is why we'll be setting up budgets in a future video. Now, another thing to uh, consider is when you get into your account, you'll be creating resources within different locations. And so within AWS, it's important to realize that uh, your services that you spin up, whether they are compute or databases or storage buckets, they belong to a particular regional location. Let's take a look at what this looks like inside the console. So here I have one of my um, dev users. And if we look at the navigation inside the um, uh, home console homepage, you'll see the users in the top right. Now, if you're part of an organization, some of this may look different. You might have some security boundaries set up on your account as well. Next to the user in the top right, to the left, you'll see the location. So before we spin up any resources, we want to make sure that we are aware of whatever region we choose to spin those uh, resources up in. Along the top left, you'll see that I have a main menu of all services here. And with that, uh, it can get fairly long and complicated to search for services. So a best practice is to also use the search bar to search for services so that you can uh, get to those particular resources directly. Now with this in mind, even then, if I'm only working with a few services for um, a direct uh, focus area, maybe I'd like a little uh, hot navigation button at the top of my console page for even quicker access. To do this, we can go to recently visited. And if you're working with services, such as maybe I'm working with Amazon Redshift, there's a star that pops up when I hover over those recent, uh, recently visited services. If I star this service, you'll notice then it is added to my navigation bar at the top. This makes it much easier to access services uh, that I'm working with on a frequent basis. So as we start to work with services along this course, feel free to add them to that top navigation bar.